Okay, so last time we talked about smooth muscle. This video, we're going to talk about cardiac muscle. This is a super interesting uh, muscle because it's kind of in between the two other ones that we talked about um, last time when we listed them out. So there's skeletal muscle, right? And then there's smooth muscle. And then there's car cardiac muscle. And if you remember, um, skeletal muscle was, um, as you know, just by having a body, that it's voluntary and um, it has striations. And then um, smooth muscle is involuntary and has uh, no striations. And um, cardiac muscle is right in between those two. So it is involuntary, right? As you know, because um, you know you can't directly control your heart rate, and it is, but it is striated. So it lands as a good uh, middle point between these two. So it's like a interesting intermediate of uh, skeletal muscle and smooth muscle. This is also controlled by, um, just like smooth muscle is, by the autonomic nervous system. Blah. Spell. By the autonomic um, nervous system. So by this I mean it's controlled by um, the sympathetic and um, parasympathetic. nervous system. So these two are always competing. And now it's important to understand that these don't actually cause uh, myocytes or um, cardiac muscle to contract. It actually just alters the rate at, at which it does contract. So sympathetic will increase heart rate, as you know, because sympathetic is most famously known, even though it's a little bit of a misnomer for fight or flight. So it's going to increase your heart rate, right? Because you want to run away from that bear or whatever. And parasympathetic is going to decrease your heart rate. Um, you, uh, like when you sleep or when you're relaxed, um, or they say rest and digest. So your heart rate goes down for that. So yeah, these don't actually initiate contraction, but they, they alter contraction in the myocytes, which is interesting. And they're always competing uh, with each other. So it's never really just sympathetic um, kind of alternating the heart rate and later parasympathetic does it they're kind of always there both of them and they're always competing with each other so if your heart rate is up it's just because you either have low parasympathetic or you have high sympathetic it could be either one and uh, same thing with parasympathetic if your heart rate is low you can either have high parasympathetic um, input to the to the node or you have really low sympathetic input to the node which will decrease your heart rate so that's uh, one thing to keep in mind as well, that they're always competing with each other. Um, also, like uh, what's really important is the sympathetic nervous system uses um, norepinephrine to, to alter the, the um, action potentials at the SA node, which is kind of the pacemaker of the cell. And parasympathetic uses um, acetylcholine. Um, so th those two are really important to know and understand. So also... Um, so one interesting thing about heart muscle or cardiac muscle, it's it's only in the heart, so it's, it's nowhere else. And in the heart, it's really surrounded by two layers. Um, let me see if I can get my color here. Um, it's surrounded by endocardium. And then there's the myocardium, which is what we we're talking about right now. This is the, the muscle of the heart. And then there's pericardium on the outside. So um, this is the only place you're gonna find um, heart muscle is in the heart. So cardiac muscle is only in the heart, unlike smooth muscle, which is everywhere, and skeletal muscle, which is in a ton of places. This is just in the heart. Now these, um, now cardiac muscle has a uh, a really important feature about it and it's very similar to smooth muscle in that it has a uh, gap junctions and these are great for communicating between cells and they allow um, see if I can spell this word correctly the muscle altogether to contract 
and um, they call it a synced, so I spelled it wrong already, which I knew I would. Synchium. And um, so they can all contract together. And uh, normally this starts at um, the action potential for heart muscle starts at the at the um, SA node and then travels down the heart utilizing these gap junctions so they can all contract when they're supposed to in sync. So it's very similar to smooth muscle in that it has that feature. Now um, what's important to know is that these gap junctions and um, these mechanical junctions too because they're all attached to each other are contained in something called an intercalated disc. Your collated disc will actually look like almost like a ladder going through these muscle cells just like this and um, depending on whether they run say these are myofibrils that we'll see in a second kind of go like this and then so this is separating uh, muscle cells and depending on the intercalated disc orientation to these myofibrils, um, depends on what they contain in them. So this one right here, which is 90 degree, has a 90 degree angle with these um, fibers. This is called a, um, let me write it in green here, it's called a transverse uh, intercalated disc. And these, these carry, um, these are the ones you actually see in histology, but these only carry uh, adherence junctions. And these pretty much just hold cells to each other and um, desmosomes as opposed to this one right here that kind of runs um, parallel with the myofibrils it's called a uh, lateral this is lateral this is transverse um, intercalated disc and um, this actually has gap junctions which we've been talking about and it also has um, adherence as well. And so it, um, it's important to know that when you look at histology, you actually only see transverse uh, intercalated, intercalated this. So you're only looking at ones without gap junctions as opposed to the lateral ones, which you can't see have, have the gap junctions, which we, we kind of know from before that these um, allow ions to move in small molecules so really they share environments with cells next to each other and that allows everything the action potentials to kind of propagate from one cell all the way throughout all the heart muscle and um, that very famous system that goes from the SA node all the way to Purkinje fibers into all the heart muscles that allows you to kind of beat in sync okay so now let's check out a diagram of a cardiac muscle cell and uh, let me grab a cool color here. We can do red. And uh, just like um, the diagram we have for the smooth muscle, I'll just kind of draw it out here. And it's, it's interesting, uh, these cardiac uh, muscle cells, because they have these kind of like legs to them. There you go. And we'll see most of the stuff on the histology uh, slide that, I bring, that I'll bring up. And so for um, cardiac myocytes, they say there's just one um, central nucleus. Now, I, I don't know. Sometimes I definitely think I see um, two. And I think some texts will also say that they have uh, two on occasion. But uh, one big central nucleus will say just for the sake of uh, this video. There we go. Let me just color this in. And this is uh, another way you can tell it apart from um, skeletal muscle as well. One big central nucleus. And so you can tell it apart from skeletal muscle because of the one big central nucleus. You can tell it apart from smooth muscle because it has these, um, it has the striations, right, in the myofibrils that go across. You can see them. It's just kind of this representation of them. There you go. And they have uh, they have the classic striations in the myofibrils. Let's see, I can just represent that with green, sure. So they'll have these striations all the way down. 
And you can just picture this on every um, one of these. And they're organized, they're organized striations as well. This is a classic look to a um, cardiac myocyte or a skeletal muscle. And um, so these sections on these myofibrils are called, are, uh, are called sarcomeres. And you should just be familiar with that with that term. And what we'll do now is we'll go, um, well, first I want to actually tell you too that this is where the intercalated discs would be right here. Right here. And because these are perpendicular with the myofibrils, these ones will be transverse. And we know that these are different transverse. Uh, intercalated disc and this is um, let me do another color let's go blue so this right here remember these will be connected to other cardiac myocytes so this is a transverse it connects to a, another cardiac myocyte right here and this is a lateral right here and if you remember the important part about the lateral which you won't be able to see in the histology uh, section which I'll show next is that these have um, Let's put it here. These have uh, gap junctions. So this is where um, the cells are communicating with each other. And they, they both, the lateral and the transverse, have um, anchoring uh, roles or mechanical uh, junctions that kind of hold the, the cells together. And that's important to know that both of them have that. But technically, you can only see a transverse on a, a light micro microscopy uh, slide. And we'll see that next. One concept actually you should know too before we move on to the histology portion is that um, cardiac myocytes need extracellular calcium um, in order to contract. And that's important because skeletal muscle doesn't need extracellular calcium to contract. And this is a commonly uh, tested concept in uh, the first year of medical school at least. I, I, I feel like I got this question a lot. but it requires extracellular calcium that comes into the cell and activates more calcium um, channels and then you get this flood of calcium which then um, allows the cell to contract so that was important I just wanted to add that in there okay I just wanted to show you um, where we're getting these cells from this is a nice slice of myocardium from um, a heart and we'll go ahead and zoom up now and take a look so this is a pretty sweet slide of uh, myocardium. In the corner here, you can actually see where we uh, took the slice from, and this little red box is where we are. And uh, these are, right here, you can see the intercalated discs. So I'll just abbreviate that. Right there, there's one right there. There's one right here. And um, notice that um, these myofibrils are perpendicular to them so that you know these are transverse intercalated discs and so these have a, more of an anchoring function and there will be um, you can't really see them that well with light microscope but um, the lateral one would be like right here somewhere and those would have the gap junctions and um, you can see the striations and the beautiful myofibrils going up and down the cells you can see like uh, here's the nucleus right here let me look at, uh, let me change the color. So this is a nice central nucleus right here. Nice central nucleus right here. This uh, muscle, these muscle cells are taken from the atrium of the heart. Um, you might actually be aware that they secrete a hormone called um, ANP. Atrial natriuretic peptide, which is actually um, a diuretic and actually gets released when you have a lot of fluid in the atrium and it stretches and then these cells release ANP out into the system and they work as a direct to kind of get that extra fluid out which is a nice uh, mechanism built into these cells also around these cells um, you can't really see it too well here but there's a lot of uh, glycogen uh, stores as well because these cells use a ton of energy right because it's a uh, heart muscle and it's strong and it's always pumping and so it uses a ton of energy, so it has a, a ton of glycogen stro stores right all around this nucleus here. And um, also, that's also where it contains all the machinery that it uses to make this ANP right here. 
And um, these cells also have, uh, you can't see too well here, but you can see it with electron microscope because they have a large uh, mitochondria as well because it uses all this energy as a ton of energy. And what's cool about this slide is actually we have, um, I think this is like a capillary right here, and um, which myocardium has capillaries and arteries running all through it because it has such a high demand for oxygen and fresh blood that it has these uh, capillaries running right in between these cells. And uh, when you exercise and things like that, it's almost extracting all the oxygen from, uh, from this blood, unlike a lot of other tissues that only take, um, which take a much smaller portion of oxygen. And this is relevant too because um, when you have a heart attack, right, uh, you get a, ischemia to this, these muscle cells and you have a lack of oxygen. And you can see why the heart muscle would be so prone to that because it requires so much oxygen for its function that it's really sensitive when it loses any uh, oxygen at all. And the damage will cause um, these cells to kind of lice and then the troponin complexes on these myofibrils will get released um, into the blood. And then you can actually pick those up with a with a test a test for troponin, and uh, physicians can use that in determining a diagnosis of an MI or use it to to figure out what's going on with patients. So that's also an interesting fact. So actually, there's one more um, slide I wanted you to take a look at, and this is um, I think from a monkey heart, and it's a plastic section, but it shows really well um, the myofibrils right here. Take a look. Coming down, you can kind of see them streaking down here. And then, of course, you have the famous um, intercalated disc right here. Intercalated disc. And then you also have, um, you know, your central nucleuses right here. Central nucleus right here. Right here. So these are where the, your glycogen uh, stores are going to be. Is right next to this nucleus right here. But I just want to show you another section. So remember, these are transverse intercalated discs. Um, and not uh, lateral intercalated discs. So I just wanted to keep that in mind, but here's another uh, beautiful section I just wanted to show you. Okay, so that's it for this video. I will see you next in the skeletal muscle video, and then we'll go into gross anatomy as well.